What will happen to a nail if you put it in acid? What color will Coca-Cola become if you pour bleach into it? How can you grow a pharaoh's serpent? Troom Troom Select is heading to the world of physics with these not-so-scientific experiments. For the first experiment, you will need a baking tray lined with parchment paper and some sand. To make things easier, tint the sand in advance. Pour it on the parchment and spread it evenly. Form several multicolored squares. Spray it with water repellent liquid for shoes. Repeat this process at least five times and be sure to let it dry completely in between. Put some of the sand in a glass. And now the most interesting thing. Pour sand into the water in a thin stream. Ordinary sand just settles on the bottom so plainly, but our hydrophobic sand turns into interesting lumps. When you take the sand out of the water, it will be completely dry. Water doesn't want anything to do with it. Sandtastic! Now we'll teach you how to make an amazing experiment with calcium gluconate pills. We recommend you do this experiment outdoors, or at least in a well-ventilated area. Put the pills in a bag. Hammer them into a powder. Lay out pieces of fuel tablets in a container with some sugar. Sprinkle it with the crushed pills. Light the fuel tablets on fire. Put some more calcium gluconate pills into the fire. Watch the so-called pharaoh's serpent hatch from the flames. Their length can reach 6 inches. Watching the serpents dance is so fascinating! For the next experiment, you need a wide container. Pour water into it. Dye it blue to make things easier. Stir it. Sketch a boat on a piece of cardboard. Cut it out along the lines. Put the boat into the water. Take a bottle of liquid soap. Squeeze out a little bit of soap into a hole in the cardboard. Due to the difference in density, the boat quickly speeds up, as if trying to escape from a surprise soap attack. To make sure the experiment works, the water can't be full of soap, so it must be changed before each demonstration. Now we have two oranges peeled and unpeeled. Conduct an investigative experiment. Drop a whole orange in water. The orange happily splashes near the surface, probably thinking that it has fallen in a warm and relaxing bath. Take the orange out from the water and drop the peeled one in instead. Oh no! A peeled orange doesn't want to swim and almost immediately sinks. What is the secret? The layer between the peel and the pulp, as well as the orange peel itself, contains air that keeps the orange afloat. In other words, the peel is like a life jacket. Without it, the orange just sinks to the bottom like a stone. For this pretty experiment, we need white roses. Cut the stem at an angle. In a glass of water, dissolve some food coloring. Put the rose in the improvised vase. If you want some variety, prepare several different colored glasses of water. After a while, the roses aren't white anymore. The colored water travels up the stem and colors the delicate petals of the flower. Blue roses are unusual and very beautiful. And now let's prepare an empty plastic container. You need a can of shaving cream. Squeeze the foam into the bowl. Add 3 tablespoons of cornstarch. Pour in some vegetable oil. Put disposable gloves on. Gently mix the ingredients. The mass quickly forms into a malleable ball. Add some dye. Some homemade and kind of unusual modeling clay is ready. It resembles something between kinetic sand and clay. It is easily shaped into any form. Just like clay, it holds its shape perfectly. What an unusual clay from ordinary materials!
For this spectacular experiment, you need an orange again. Or rather, it's peel. Cut off a piece of the peel. Bring the orange peel to a burning candle. Squeeze and splash the juice on the fire. Observe the short, bright flash. The oils found in the peel of the orange are what you see burning. For the next experiment, you need a plastic bottle and a balloon. Stretch the balloon over the neck of the bottle. In one of the bowls, pour boiling water and pour ice water into the second. Put the bottle in hot water. The balloon on the bottle inflates. And if you move it into a bowl with cold water, the balloon deflates immediately. Simple, really! When immersed in hot water, the air in the bottle heats up and increases in volume. The balloon's walls are more elastic than plastic, so we can clearly see it inflate. And when the bottle is immersed in cold water, the air inside it cools down and decreases in volume, and the balloon deflates. Now, take a match out of the box and place it against the wall so that it casts a shadow. Ignite it! But where is the shadow? It is unclear if it has one or not. The flame of a burning match doesn't cast a shadow, because the fire itself is a source of light. Did you know that? Prepare a jar for another unusual experiment. Pour blue copper sulfate powder in it. It can be purchased at any gardening shop. Add water and stir until the powder is completely dissolved. Put a nail in the jar and leave it for about a day. Remove the nail from the solution. The metal corrosion has started. The nail is covered with a dense, uneven layer of spongy copper. Because of the red color, this effect is called Martian rust. Out of this world! For this next experience, put a piece of white bread in a clear container. Fill with a small amount of warm water. Press the slice of bread down with your fingers. Soak the bread until starch is extracted from it. The water should turn cloudy and get a whitish tint. Pour water into a glass. Add some iodine. Suck some of the solution into a pipette. Drip iodine into the starchy water. The drop of iodine turns dark blue. It's even more interesting if you pour the entire glass into the starch solution at once. This is the effect of black cuttlefish. And now we will show an interesting experiment with Coca-Cola. Pour the Coke into a glass. Put on some protective gloves. Get some liquid bleach. Add a little bleach to the Coke. Right before your eyes, the liquid in the glass brightens to a straw yellow hue. If you compare the yellow Coke with the original, the difference is crazy! Next, you need three small jars. Drip some food dye on the bottom. Add water. Stir until the dye is completely dissolved. Pour some baby oil into the bottom of a glass bowl. Get a little of the dyed water with a pipette and squeeze a drop in the oil. Due to the difference in density, the water does not spread and the droplet firmly holds the shape. You can even decorate the oil canvas with a beautiful drip pattern. Droplets look like tiny eggs. Be careful, it's addictive! And if you shake the plate in different directions, you get a cartoon splat! This time, you will need a plastic bottle and a watering can. Insert the watering can into the neck of the bottle. Seal them together with modeling clay. And now for the experiment. Take the exact same bottle and insert the same watering can into it. For greater entertainment, dye the water green with food coloring. Pour water into the bottles and compare the speeds of the water. The water in the bottle with the clay junction is clearly not in a hurry. The speed of water in a bottle without sealant is much greater. It's visible to the naked eye. It is all about the clay blockage of the joints, which does not allow air to pass through and slows down the movement of water. Did you have a fun experience watching our experiments? Let us know in the comments which ones you'll try! Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Troom Troom Select, and click on the bell to see even more interesting experiments on our channel!